My name is Francis Taylor. I was born on what is known as Fly Creek, August the 13th, 1927. Well, my parents was Tom and Lucy Taylor. My mother's maiden name was King, and I had one brother, older, James, and a sister, younger, Valera. Well, they, they, were, they had a small orchard, and they raised some cattle and, and had some sheep. Well, we, we herded in the livestock of the evening after school, and we put out hay to feed for the, for the night in the wintertime. But, uh, and we, we sold, at that time there wasn't any uh, market for whole milk. We sold cream down at the Clyde store. <laughs> this was back in the 30s. One of my earliest memories was uh, back in 1933, this is the year I started the school over here. Cane Hill. Mrs. Richardson was the first grade teacher. And uh, I believe we had first and second grade in, in one room at that time. Oh, we had that reading and writing and arithmetic. <laughs> and uh, of course, it was, it was really a learning experience because we weren't used to sitting still. <laughs> well, there's a, a church building on Fly Creek, and we went to Sunday school and church every Sunday, religiously. <laughs> well, usually we, we went home. Sometimes we'd go home with someone else for dinner, or they, we'd take someone home with us for dinner. The next next door here was, of course, was the Cane Hill Drugstore. It was run by uh, Johnny Miller, and uh, he he stocked some groceries. And across the street over there was a, uh, a, a grocery store, uh, just a general mercantile, uh, run by Shaker Gates. And it also, at that time, the post office was in that building. And there was an adjacent building there. I remember uh, uh, Mr. Williams, I don't know where, where they came from here, but they had one boy that went to school named Leslie Williams. Uh, and he was a, a furniture. He made furniture. I know uh, my sister played the piano and my dad had him to build a piano stool. Oh, we, we played basketball, baseball, uh, pitched horseshoes, <laughs> and they, they played some volleyball because we, we, didn't, we didn't know much about volleyball. We didn't have coaches that did either. <laughs> Well, of course, their central place of entertainment was the church. Or, and during school terms, uh, they had activities at, at school put on by the, the children of the school, uh, like three-act plays you know, for junior and senior highs. And, and, and then Halloween, of course, was a, was a big day for the, for the kids. <laughs> it was kind of a carnal affair after school. <laughs> I could remember the mill. Uh, uh, they uh, still with people that bring their corn to get it ground for their meal. Uh, and at that time, there was a, a covered scales out there. They they uh, could weigh wagons and teams and that sort of thing. It, was, uh, it wasn't a big operation at that time, but they were in operation back in the 30s. Of course, it was originally the, the College of the Ozark, and uh, when they 
moved to Clarksville with the college, then uh, they turned it over. I get to a public use school, I suppose, and some of the changes that was made in the entryway and the windows and things like that, you could, you could tell the difference in the brick. Uh, that's, that's about all I remember really about the Armando Richardson, I guess, had the first uh, kind of a re reunion up there, and she she had a, a school for girls up there. Some uh, I don't know a month or something like that during the summer, and they usually entertained some, and uh, we'd have a little parade organized by the community, and then. After that, uh, the building started to have problems. Why Armenta turned it back to the community, and and we started having uh, the festivals when they uh, made sorghum, lysol, apple butter, and and they had vendors, and and they'd have groups that would sing for entertainment, and they served breakfast and dinners uh, for as a two-day affair, Saturday and Sunday. It, uh, it was really a blessing because we as a community was trying to uh, fix this building and we were told by uh, state engineers that the, the auditorium uh, wasn't safe, so we had to close it the auditorium for the last two or three years we had the festivals but uh, that was one of the main things that, that they started in to do up here uh, was to get it the structure stabilized and they had to take all the brick out of, of the uh, I guess it would be the, the west end of it. They used to have doctors Dr. Bean was a doctor here in Game Hill back in the 30s. I remember him. Uh, he'd been to our house. And up on the, up the road up here where he turned up toward the cemetery there on the corner there. Uh, that's a, that's a, uh, I think that's where Dr. Bean lived in his time that I, I can remember him. And uh, then just across the street there on the other corner, there was a old doctor by the name of Curry. And he made house calls. He's the one who brought me into this world. <laughs> well, they had the old uh, cannon factory up here. I worked in there uh, when I was 16, I guess. Uh, they can, at that time, was tomatoes. And that whole slab there where uh, that building is now was a, a, the a warehouse. And uh, it had the uh, a recessed concrete uh, uh, pool there. And that water was hit by coal from a, a steam engine that it had this huge iron metal baskets and put those canned sealed tomatoes in there and they would had a, what we would call a, a wings but it was just a kind of a rollers with had a hook you hook the bale that and they'd lower those in there and Mr. Clay Pye he was the man that uh, did the cooking and it was, it was quite interesting. I used to catch cans out of that capper with a, a, about a four inch wide belt. You'd get a bunch of them out there and you'd wrap that belt around there and you'd grip it and you'd set them over in that basket. And it was a very hot job because those tomatoes were coming up the line and, and they were hot enough to seal that uh, top on the cans. It worked. It worked a lot of people. And it was income for, for the farmers around here. Mm -hmm. And that whole 
side next to the, the, the screen there was screen wire. And they had tables around there for the ladies to peel, and they had a man that would bring those tomatoes. They run from the outside, they poured them into a, a, a platform, and they roll down in these buckets, and they would carry them to the ladies, and then they'd carry the peelings away. And uh, they had a, a container of some kind that they could put on a wagon and haul those away. And then in the fall or winter, I never did with some of the local people. I, uh, they'd label and, and uh, case those, I guess, to whoever they sold them to. So it was, it was quite a little bit of money for the, the local people back then because we didn't have Walmarts and the Black Hot Highway. And I remember at that time, the old fountain sat out here right in the middle of 45. And there was running water through that all the time. And it had a basin to, to water your horses or whatever. Was but, that used a lot? Tell me about how they would use it. Well, that was the main object for it. Of course, you could go over there and get a drink out of that gooseneck spout. It's uh, probably two feet high from that where horses, you know, could drink out of this little reservoir. Then they had a, a drain in it that, that went into the ditch and across into the uh, stream there.